The event viewer in any version of Windows Server or client is invaluable in trying to troubleshoot any issues on that particular device. Let's start out in Server Manager and go to Tools, and I'm going to open up Event Viewer. Now inside Event Viewer, there's lots of different types of events. So we've got the most popular area here is Windows Logs. You can see there's Application, Security, Setup, and System. Now, application logs are going to show you any types of problems or informational events that have to do with any applications on your computer. And the majority of those events are likely going to be informational. At least you hope they are. If the majority are errors or critical events, then that could be another problem. So if we go down to information, you can see various different types of pieces of information about what's going on with your server, such as a service has stopped, a service has started, things like that. But if you're troubleshooting, what you really want to do is you want to look at any errors or warnings that are going on with that particular log. So I'm going to click on level, and here I can sort by the various different levels rather than the time. So here you can see errors. Errors tell you a lot of information about what's going on, especially if it generated a log file just after you had a problem with an application. Here we're seeing licensing failed errors, which is, tells us that a particular application is not having the correct licensing in order to work correctly. Here's one that has to do with Windows Update. You see wuauclt.exe. That's the Windows Update. And what you can do is you can take portions of your log and copy and paste it into a web search to find out what each of these different applications that may be causing an issue. And then you'll have an idea of how to troubleshoot them. Also take a look at the bottom where it says things like event ID, the user, keywords, things like that. Those are also clues as to what's happening with a particular issue. And if I click on details, then I can see additional information that may not be available in the general tab that will also help me to say copy and paste into a search to find out what's happening. If I scroll down to warnings, you can see that there may be a problem with an application, but it's not quite to the point of error yet. So you can kind of get an idea of when things started to go wrong and when things turned into an error. Now, if I go down to system, this has to do with the operating system and any hardware events. And once again, I'm going to sort by level. And now I can see some errors that are going on with my server. Some of these errors are things that I can just go ahead and ignore because they're part of every operating system. But you can go ahead and look up some of these different errors by looking at the event log, error, event ID, and any other error codes that might come up. Here's one at the bottom that says critical. Critical means that the system itself was in danger and it shut down or is about to shut down. In this case, you can see it's possible that the server lost power, or maybe it was just forced off by pressing in the power button or reset button. Security logs have to do with people logging on and logging off, and general auditing. So if you turn on auditing, which is an entire process of auditing either file access, file deletion, things like that, you would also see that information here as well. And that would give you a good idea of who's logging in, when, and what it is that they're doing. Now these audit logs can build up really fast, so you'll need to make sure that you have enough space to handle it. So on any one of these logs. You can right click and choose properties. And inside properties, it shows you the maximum amount of log size files. So here you can see the maximum log size. And here, you, this is going to give me 131 megabytes of actual log files. And when it reaches that, it will overwrite the oldest ones as needed. You can also archive the log when full and it will not overwrite anything. And then it will send that information off to a designated area, maybe where you have a lot of hard drive space. And you can also choose to not overwrite events, but that's not a great idea because these logs can definitely get to a point where it can crash your server and use up all your hard drive space. 
Another area of logs just to take a quick look at is going to be the applications and services logs. So this goes further than just the application log that we looked at earlier. This has specific server roles and features that have been installed, such as directory service. Directory service has to do with Active Directory and replication between the different domain controllers. Then, of course, we've got DNS server service. That is going to show us any type of names to IP addresses and other issues that could cause DNS to have problems and maybe cause Active Directory to not function properly. If I go down to where it says Microsoft, we see even more different types of logs. I'm going to expand Windows, for instance. Look at all the different types of logs that you can review. Now, a lot of these logs have nothing in them. So for instance, you can see this one is not populated, but others are going to be very much populated. And so when you're having a problem with a specific application or service, then you can look up to see which log file is gonna to correspond to this. And that is just a quick overview of Windows logs on a Windows server. In this case, it's a Windows 2022 server. However, this also applies to older versions of Windows servers as well as clients.